So next up, we have a panel talking about telcos and uh, OpenStack and how the two work well together. And uh, once again, we do have a uh, opportunity on Twitter for you to ask questions. Now, uh, last uh, afternoon, yesterday morning, rather, uh, we actually did not get to some of the Twitter questions, but I promise we will get to some of them today. Um, the good news is many of the questions from yesterday were actually about NFV. Explain it to me. What does it actually mean? Yet another buzzword to learn. So uh, we'll get to some of those questions, but please go ahead and and tweet your questions with the appropriate hashtag, and we will get to those. So, uh, next up, I'm gonna introduce Michael Still, who's gonna be moderating the panel, and he is a project technical lead for the Compute Project, and uh, he's kind of a big deal. So, come on out, Michael, and introduce the, uh, the panel. Wow, there's kind of a lot of you out there. So I know it's been a long morning, and we all want to get to the break, so we need to make this as interesting as possible. But that's kind of on you, not me, because you need to ask good questions on Twitter. But let's keep the ball, ball rolling and, and get on with it. So I'd like to bring out my panel members, please. So we have Marcus from Swisscom. Thanks, man. Zhao Long from Orange. And Toby from AT&T. And I think I should get an award for getting that right, by the way. <laughs> so thanks for coming along. Now, I think one of the interesting things about this panel is these guys are users. This isn't filtered by their vendors or anything like this. This is an, op this is an opportunity to hear what they actually need from the OpenStack community. And so I think we should make the most of that. So let's start off with, could you all briefly introduce yourselves? Yes, so I'm Marcus Bronner. I'm working for Swisscom. I'm leading their standardization. And that's sort of particular because we believe that OpenStack is the de facto standard in cloud infrastructure. So that's our interest there. Xiaolong uh, Kong, I'm working at Orange Labs as a team leader. We are working in cloud computing in general and in particular in OpenStack since two or three years. And I'm uh, Toby Ford, I work for AT&T on I'm responsible for architecture and strategy for our cloud and platform uh, infrastructure. I've been working on OpenStack for quite a while, four years. Cool. So let's start with an easy question. How are you guys currently using OpenStack? So on the Swisscom side, we actually use OpenStack from uh, Piston with networking uh, from uh, PlumGrid. We use it as an infrastructure layer for our application cloud. So we run on top of this OpenStack, we run a Cloud Foundry. Same here, we believe that Cloud Foundry might be a de facto standard for the higher layers. And that's where we basically try to produce our applications and where you also allow third parties to deliver their applications on it and uh, use our infrastructure out of that cloud system. And that's what we do at the moment. That's purely IT-oriented. Uh, uh, work we do, and I think NFV we're going to talk afterwards. Definitely. Uh, at Orange, uh, yes, we are using OpenStack in several ways. First, since nearly two years, uh, we are working in the adoption and adaptation uh, of OpenStack for our internal IT applications. Uh, our senior VP, uh, Jay Sushi, has given a detailed presentation yesterday about this subject. Secondly, uh, we are working with the company CloudWatch uh, on building public cloud offers on top of OpenStack. And uh, the last, not the least, uh, Orange is contributing actively within the OpenStack community to improve the neutron component. Cool. And then uh, for AT&T, we've been using OpenStack for the last four years and with a number of different partners. We've tried to stay w as close to vanilla upstream to OpenStack as possible. And then uh, where we've made any innovations, we've tried to contribute that back. Uh, we've used it primarily for internal applications and a lot of our developer-focused uh, external offers. So our API exposure programs are all running on OpenStack. And then in the last year, we've really focused on NFV and, and target a few of those applications. Okay, so people keep using the term NFV. Uh, 
give me a non-telco description of what it actually means. Essentially, it's virtualizing network functions. R switches, routers, uh, DNS bind the typical kind of uh, functions you would, would need to run DHCP, these kind of things you would run a network. And then for telcos specifically, things that get into mobility systems, the, the major three components of the mobility system, the RAN, the MPC, and the uh, IMS core, these three components have many subtending components that would get virtualized in, a, in a, an FV solution. Mm -hmm. So maybe part of the misunderstanding is how do telco data centers differ from the enterprise environments people might have seen before? Are we talking about just you know, racks and racks of computers, or is it different from that? Uh, in fact, uh, telco operators such as Orange host and uh, manage a huge variety of different applications across uh, many data centers. Uh, one particularity of these telco applications is their huge uh, heterogeneity in terms of uh, their runtime uh, environment. For example, the operating system, the middleware, the library dependency. Uh, secondly, uh, many telco applications should support real-time com communication, which doesn't tolerate much the latency. So real-time performance is also uh, an important uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. Probably to add to the real-time one, I don't think it's really about real-time, it's really about guarantees. So we have a set of services which require certain guarantees and also legally require certain guarantees. I think to add also what I was not hearing uh, so far is uh, security. So there is, uh, I mean, telco systems tend to be secure at the moment. <laughs> to a certain, at that. least to a certain degree, we can discuss the degree. Uh, so that's, that's one, one thing which I believe is, is a bit different, though, I mean, with our <laughs> footprint in banking, that also need to be highly secure on the IT side. Mm -hmm. The last thing I would add, incre increment to that, is uh, existing telco environments are very regulated, at least in North America. So the, the actual facility we use has a lot of l legal rules we have to apply uh, to. Uh, and so we're doing a lot of work to try to work around those in this as we go forward. Mm -hmm. So the next question I have on my little bit of paper is, why is NFV special? It seems to me that maybe some of the answer is real time, but are there other things we need to be thinking about when we think about this use case? Yeah, so when we started to look into OpenStack, and that's a few years ago already, um, OpenStack was not terribly well suited for large IO loads. <laughs> and even if you really think, I mean, uh, Toby was talking about uh, in the mobile network, basically every mobile packet would flow through that cloud system, right, if you have this type of functions there. So that's the level of, of I.O. load we, we need to have. And I think that's a bit of special, at least from how it was built up. I see a lot of work going into that direction now, and I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think NFV is an important thing for us because of, uh, at one level, it's about being more efficient and trying to run, you know, more competitive environment, uh, try to find something that would run multiple workloads and r use up as much of the assets as possible. Uh, that's a very important driver for us uh, because we have a lot of competition coming from interesting new areas, and they they typically come at us with all shared infrastructure and all uh, quite unified. This is not typically how telcos have run. It's typically been very siloed, and we're trying to to change that and pool our resources together on one common platform. So that's that's a key part of it, as well as the time to market, the extensibility. Our competitors are rolling things out much faster than now than ever before, and we have to make an environment, an infrastructure that will extend quickly. I I agree with Marcus and uh, Toby about the importance of uh, NFV. I would like to uh, add uh, a technical point. Uh, NFV does not not mean the simple virtualization uh, by replacing physical machines, 
by uh, virtual machines for the typical applications, since the simple uh, virtualization may lead to performance issues uh, and doesn't provide the uh, highly expected scale uh, capability. Uh, by saying NFV, uh, we are often talking in two aspects. The first, having a, a carrier-grade uh, uh, cloud infrastructure, and secondly, adaptation of the existing uh, telco applications and platforms. Mm -hmm. So may I add to what Toby said, since we uh, want to sort of move to a sort of relatively vertically integrated box type of business to this sort of platform, hopefully NFV platform with these functions on top, there the whole discussion comes in, sort of what's the guarantee a platform gives to the VNFs, these applications on top, and who is responsible for end-to-end -end performance guarantees in this type of, of, of setting. So if we buy a VNF from a third party, we put it on our uh, cloud system, uh, NFV cloud system, uh, who is now responsible if something doesn't go well, specifically if it doesn't go well in a performance or security perspective? Mm -hmm. So um, I see that we have some questions from Twitter, but I'm going to ignore them for one second because I have a question and <laughs> I've got the microphone. Um, so what about less cool features? Do you guys need um, live upgrades, good performance at scale, cluster-wide scheduling, things that I don't see really being talked about uh, as part of the NFV use case? Or will you never upgrade your cluster, for example? Yeah, this, this is a particular uh, sensitive point for me. I mean, we've, since we have a lot of sites uh, with OpenStack, uh, we, need, we, we really need help to make it so that we can upgrade and get rolling upgrades happening and continuous integration to happen uh, for these sites. We anticipate deploying OpenStack in a large number of locations. Not exactly huge setups per location, but a lot of them. And um, that, that really requires that we get the lifecycle management down solid and we're able to not only deploy quickly, but maintain it uh, over time. So that's key. And then obviously, if we have a lot of these locations, having some level of uh, like uh, integration across site uh, is going to be uh, essential. OK, cool. Uh, I, I, it's very important, but I mean, I got the feeling, I mean, the whole cloud paradigm is actually exactly helping doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure on, on, on detail how far OpenStack is in, in, in that. And if it's not, then it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a feature which is, is needed. I thought it's there. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's uh, take some Twitter questions. So we, let's start off with, what's your primary use case for OpenStack inside a telco? What are you going to do with these open, OpenStack installs? At the, at the moment, as I said, at the moment, we, we run application IT uh, uh, workloads on it. Uh, if we really go uh, uh, NFV, it's all types of network functions are candidates. And to be quite frank, I mean, that's not something we're going to do tomorrow. So. We looked into it, and it's basically a bit of a life cycle uh, issue. So if there is a function at the end of life, we're going to probably move that to a more cloud NFV-based system. Uh, the, the immediate benefit is not shown at the moment to sort of move before, before its end of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for us, we actually, beyond uh, the IT workloads that are in our existing system, I mean, we're actively pushing things that uh, actually have already been working quite well NFV-wise in a virtual environment, things like a Viata. People have used Viata for, uh, as an example on top of uh, virtual machines or containers to actually uh, to do one, one particular function in our network called uh, the customer edge router, uh, which is very uh, a smaller kind of setup that uh, doesn't have the performance requirements of a, say, a mobility system for all consumers uh, that can be deployed on a one, on one customer kind of basis, per customer basis. So we're, we're starting that right now. Uh, so that's, that's a, an initial kind of toe in on this, this concept that, that does exist today. Mm -hmm. I think the obvious follow-up question is, will my mobile phone calls ever get routed over OpenStack? Will it ever be my fault if my call doesn't work? <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. I mean, already today, a lot of our calls are on ending up on some sort of virtualized uh, uh, systems. Not OpenStack yet, but sort of virtualized type of systems. I don't see any reason why not. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm pushing as hard as possible to make that happen by the end of next year or in 2016. Okay, I think you need to come back and tell us when it's ready so that we can <laughs> all make a lot of calls. Yeah, and I can blame you. Uh, so next question from Twitter. What improvements in OpenStack that aren't code would help you the most? So I guess people are thinking docs, you know, deployment tools, that sort of thing. Uh, I think uh, if OpenStack could uh, provide natively integrated uh, design, planning, and configuring uh, uh, and deployment, automatic deployment tools to manage uh, multiple data centers, uh, it would be fine. And if these tools could also manage the change management of the data center hardware, it would be better. Mm -hmm. I think the, the testing aspect, uh, Tempest and these things around uh, being able to do full, full integration testing, API testing, this, this kind of thing is essential in my view, to get to what uh, we were just talking about. Yeah, it certainly seems like you guys care about reliability. Yes. Ah, <laughs> which is kind of our next question. That's kind of funny. How important is continuous integration, delivery, and DevOps in your NFV journey? Oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> um, we, have a long, we have long discussions. If we really go NFV, if you're phone calls rely on continuous integration. At the moment, we, we don't feel comfortable enough to do that, to be quite honest. Um, it's, if it's for IT systems, for like applications where they can fail, or things like that, it's okay. But if it really comes to the core network bit, if our whole Swisscom-wide network is down because something goes wrong, Continuous integration is a bit of a stretch at the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably leave it to some early adopters first to try that. <laughs> this area is very important to me. I feel like uh, agile, agile methods, uh, not just continuous integration deployment, but test-driven and, and uh, just the sort of collaboration that agile brings is an essential ingredient to what's transforming us as a, as a, as we get into this space. So for me, I think it is an essential uh, step for us to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I mean, I trust my car to be uh, continuously deployed today, so I will trust in the future that my phone will as well. So if some of you aren't going to be doing continuous deployment, how long do we need to support our stable releases for? Do you guys roll out code every six months, every 15 years? Um, what's it look like? <laughs> so t today, probably, we have the equipment there for something like 10 years. Or more. <laughs> or more. Yeah, some, <laughs> some of it even more. And you don't do firmware upgrades on that equipment once it's deployed? We actually wrap uh, these certain boxes with plexiglass so they don't leak all over everything else. <laughs> 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 Exactly. Some of, some of it is no upgrade. I don't touch it if it's working. Exactly. Uh, um, I yeah. have some bad news, by the way, but yeah. <laughs> we can talk about that later. I, I don't. I, 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 we need stable uh, uh, releases because it, it, it. I guess it will take some time. And testing was mentioned before. I mean, if you go through some test cycle and so on, you want to have a certain stability for a certain time, specifically for the OpenStack and the, really the infrastructure layer. I mean, if it's about applications and VNFs running on top of it, it's probably even a di different discussion. Also, where agility might be even helpful. But the baseline infrastructure should be rather stable. Mm -hmm. I think this is the, really the paradox or the problem that we have to address is if, if we don't do continuous integration, then we have to live with a lot of past sins. And we have to find the right balance between the two, two because that's, you know, as, as was said, how do we get to a really stable thing that is being changed all the time? Okay. So what's the interest in having the same level of openness in your network hardware that OpenStack gives you? 
That's very, very high. I mean, I, I feel like this is another very essential point to what we're trying to get to. We've suffered in the past with being railroaded or end, uh, stuck in a dead end with one, one vendor and one proprietary solution. And then I think we're realizing how important and essential it is to, to be more open and collaborative. The various telcos around the world are having solving the same problems. There's not a lot of differentiation in what we're trying to solve for. Um, I think collaborating, being open, transparent about what's going on is, is a great way to help the customers, ourselves, try to get, get, get better value out of the telcos. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's key. Uh, I think uh, as a telco operator, we are of course interested uh, in uh, hardware uh, standardization, but not uh, to the point of uh, open compute. For the moment, I think uh, uh, it's very satisfied to uh, use uh, x186 uh, servers standard. It's already sufficient for telco operator. Mm -hmm. looking at more Twitter questions. Are there any specific challenges you face with your OpenStack initiatives? Is there anything you'd like us to do that we haven't already discussed? I, I was listening to uh, Tim before, and it was sort of reminding me to our challenges if it comes to the organizational issues. I mean, yeah, in, in telecommunication, you have a box. Typically, you have somebody responsible for exactly that box or that service or that feature or something like that. And if we start changing that, you also need to change your organizational structures and you need to take away something from somebody and give something new. So the whole personal issues around uh, uh, these topics, I think, are, are, are a big hurdle. And that has nothing to do with whether it's OpenStack or not, but that's sort of coming a bit with the horizontalization and a bit with the sort of open way of doing things and doing things different, which also means a sort of a, a mental change which is required in the company. That will take quite a bit of time. Yeah, for us, I mean, uh, a key area that needs work is performance through x86 boxes as hosts, um, especially network, the number of packets per second, um, getting something that's more deterministic and low latency through boxes. So work around integration with Open vSwitch and making Open vSwitch whole, uh, integration with the various SDNs that are coming to make the whole f uh, an overlay solution performant. These things, I think, are essential as we try to scale. Mm -hmm. Trying to continue to do networking that's all on dedicated physical hardware, we want to get away from that as much as possible. So that area of performance of networking end to ends is key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. plus, plus the network grows out of the data center or integrates with the network outside of the data yeah, that center. So it comes basically w together with what you're saying. Yeah, I couldn't reiterate that point more. The WAN and the LAN are, uh, are the really integrated in the future. Mm -hmm. So Toby, you mentioned Open vSwitch. What sort of networking model a telco is running? Does it tend to be something open like Open vSwitch is, or is it a proprietary SDN? Well, we've, we have instances of we have three or four different variations. Almost all of them have Open vSwitch as a, as a part of the mm -hmm. picture. So, um, you know, we have examples that are flat um, using physical VLANs and physical hardware. And then we have, we've been using the GRE Open vSwitch model for s quite a number of sites. We have a number of other SDN vendors in our picture as well. It's still not any one of them is, is a perfect solution quite yet. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I mean, we, we put a lot of belief in that this movement on SDN, open daylight might help, but it's not there, uh, there yet at the, at the moment. And we run, at the moment, we run a, a, a plum grid in the data center thing. It's sort of vSwitch based uh, uh, solutions for data center bit. Uh, I think this is still an open question. We, there's a lot of discussion around here. And I, I see a lot of Swisscom people in the audience ta talking only about this particular issue. <laughs> okay, cool. So we only have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything else you'd like to say to us that you haven't had a chance to say yet? Well, one thing certainly is pushing on the VNF vendors, the people that make the software, to think more like uh, my new favorite term, midget cattle, instead of the pets way. Because uh, I, I, Telco, 
uh, NFV solutions uh, have the same problem that large enterprise backend systems have had, where things get stuck in a very monolithic way. Uh, breaking that out into a scale-out model and, and in a way that is truly scale-out, using smaller com disposal co components and not relying on a big VM or a, uh, essentially replicating the vertical integration that you had in a piece of hardware in a VM. Uh, getting to scale out for those things is key. And I think that's a huge opportunity in the ecosystem that's forming around us is the startups that are showing up that are actually building telco solutions in a, in a more truly scale out way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like it's not just performance that you guys need. You need reliability and upgrade realty and all that other stuff we need to do for everyone else as well. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. I would like also emphasis on the importance of NFV for telco operators, since uh, I think uh, without uh, carrier grade ready uh, cloud infrastructure, NFV uh, could be the, the reality. Uh, so uh, we are glad to see that in OpenStack community, there is already a work group, OpenStack uh, uh, NFV work group is created and uh, is focusing on these issues. And uh, we will be uh, glad to see some uh, concrete results in this work group. Mm -hmm. So Marcus, you have eight seconds. Eight seconds. <laughs> so I, I really would love to see more in work in the sort of the packaging of the VNF and how you bring it onto the platform with certain guarantees or certain requirements this VNF has and have the sort of for a reliable system at the end of, uh, end of the day. Cool. Well, we're out of time, so if you could all help me thank the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate everybody uh, participating. You know, the telco market is a trillion dollar market, so if we can get OpenStack helping them, that's, pretty, that's a pretty big impact for all the work you guys do. So I just want to say that uh, we have people here, as I said, from over 60 countries, so please Enjoy the rest of your week. Make sure that you meet people from other companies and other countries. Get to know them. Share your stories. And when you go back home to those 60 countries that you came from, please bring back a little piece of the future and help bring OpenStack to your country and help me prove William Gibson wrong. Uh, but last but not least, and most importantly, I just hope you all have a good time with OpenStack. Thank you.